How's it going? Dave here and in today's video I'm going to be talking all about selective picking. I'm going to be showing you the mechanics of the technique, how to improve it, some exercises and some arpeggios that you can use to further develop your selective picking. Before we get started I'm just going to show you a quick example so you can get a feel for the sound of selective picking. This is a cool math rock kind of tune so enjoy. <laughs> So selective picking, I knew about it a while ago from Tosin Abassi, but he's recently uh, uploaded some videos of some selective picking etudes and it's inspired me to get better at the technique myself and now I'm going to show you what I've learned. So selective picking is pretty self-explanatory, uh, you're picking only a select amount of notes. So for example, if you were playing 5th fret of the A string, a D, and you wanted to play it three times, what you would do is you'd hammer on out of nowhere and then pick the second and third like that and what what the technique does is it creates a really cool timbre so so it sounds a lot different to if you were to just use your pick three times there's a more percussive sound with that hammer on and you really have to make sure you get that percussive kind of slap sound uh, it's very similar to slap bass, I guess. Now, having a compressor is really gonna enhance the sound of your selective picking. Typically, hammer-ons are not gonna sound as loud as if you're picking a note, so it's gonna squash everything together into similar levels. That's something that's just gonna enhance your selective picking a little bit. So let's take a look at the first exercise that I've got prepared for you. This is probably what you should do to get started with selective picking. And this is a triplet exercise, so uh, when you're practicing with a metronome, you are going to want to practice uh, three notes per click. So what we're doing is we are using a power chord. So we're hammering on the first note. So you can play this anywhere, but I'm gonna use the fifth fret of the A string. And then you're gonna pick twice down, up on the A string. So we're going. Then you're gonna do the same thing on the D string, but at the seventh fret, and you're gonna use your ring finger. Something that you'll find is that that first note of the triplet you're really going to want to pick and you really have to practice slowly to kind of unlearn that tendency uh, to pick the first note but once you get used to it it's actually uh, really really not that hard to do. The next thing you're going to want to do is practice maybe some string skipping so uh, you can do an octave shape so probably the next thing you can do and then after that you might just want to practice playing random notes on your fretboards and what you really want to do is make sure that those hammer-ons are sounding very nice and uh, percussive and it's really going to get that sound that that sets selective picking apart from everything else now let's take a look at a few arpeggios that I like to use when selective picking. I used it in the example at the beginning. So I'm using major nine, minor nine, and dominant nine arpeggios here. So the first arpeggio, the major nine arpeggio, uh, we're gonna do a D major nine arpeggio. And what we're gonna play is five on the A string, nine on the A string as well, seven on the D string, six on the G string, and nine on the G string as well. Now, now you can just ascend and descend the arpeggio with selective picking, so something like this. Or you can get creative and make some really nice, cool sounding patterns. So I've got a couple of exercises that you can do, and the first one would be to play the root, the fifth, then the ninth. So we're playing the fifth fret of the A string, seventh fret of the D string, and ninth fret of G string and we are just hammering them all out of nowhere we're not going to do any picking so we're just going then we're going to do two picks of that ninth fret of the G string so then we're going to play the seventh 
that's going to be a hammer on out of nowhere, which is at the sixth fret of the G string. Then the seventh fret of the D string, which is our fifth, uh, that's going to be another hammer on out of nowhere. Then we're going to hammer on the third, which is the ninth fret of the A string, and then pick two notes there. So all together, our arpeggio is. It looks like that. Um, and then you can do it with a dominant nine arpeggio. So the dominant nine arpeggio is seven. Uh, this is an E dominant nine arpeggio. So seven, 11 on the A string, nine on the D string, and then seven, 11 on the G string. And you can also do it with a minor nine arpeggio as well. So I'm going to use an F sharp minor nine arpeggio, and that is nine, 12 on the A string, 11 on the D string, and then nine, 13 on the G string. If you mix them together, you can create some cool chord progressions with these arpeggios. You've got that, and then another exercise you can do is to play um, the root, then the fifth, then the third, then the seventh, then the fifth, then the ninth. Uh, so let me break that down. So I'm going to use the minor nine arpeggio. So we're going to play the ninth fret of the A string. And we're going to play three notes there, selective picking the last two. Then the eleventh fret of the D string. Then the twelfth fret of the A string. Then the ninth fret of the G string. Then the eleventh fret of the D string. And then the thirteenth fret of the G string. So. You get that kind of effect, and you can do it with the other arpeggios as well. So there are some exercises for selective picking. If you want to learn the example at the beginning, then there's a tab down at my Patreon, and I've got tabs for all the arpeggios and exercises for this video at my Patreon as well. Links in the description. If you enjoyed the video, like the video and let me know what you thought in the comments. Um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And also check out in the description, the first two chapters of my book, Chord Charisma, absolutely free. That's gonna show you how to write some really awesome chord progressions and incorporate chords like sevenths, ninths, elevenths, thirteenths um, and use them very effectively. So I'll see you in the next video.